She was at the DNC with a pipe bomb outside. Her bodyguards found that bomb, but she lied about that. She hid that. Why? That's got to be one of the weirdest stories ever. What does it mean, Liz Cheney? Silence. And of course, above all, they lie about the reason that January 6th happened in the first place. And you know what it is. The entire country watched Joe Biden get what they claimed was 10 million more votes than Barack Obama himself got. Joe Biden got 10 million more votes than Barack Obama got. And a lot of those votes arrived after the election. In a lot of places, voting, voting was stopped in the middle of the night. Why? In the biggest states in the country, voter ID was optional. Why is that okay? A lot of the protesters on January 6th were very upset about that. And they should have been. All of us should be. But the January 6th committee ignored all of that completely. Instead, on the basis of zero evidence, no evidence whatsoever, they blamed the entire riot on white supremacy. Here's Joe Biden. We're confronting the stains and what remains a deep stain on the soul of the nation. Hate and white supremacy. The violent, deadly insurrection on the Capitol nine months ago, it was about white supremacy in my view. What? There's no evidence for that. None. The people at the Capitol, including the ones who broke the law by entering the Capitol, which is a crime, those people to a person said they were upset because they believed their democracy had been stolen from them. And whether all of their claims are true or not, that's a valid reason to be upset. But rather than reassure the rest of us that actually our democracy is sound, elections are fair and transparent, there's no cheating and we can prove it, rather than do that, they call half the country names. And not just names, the worst name you can be called, the white supremacist. And then most bewilderingly of all, virtually no Republican in Washington pushed back against any of that. In fact, Lindsey Graham, violence worshiper to the end, said that his only regret was that the Capitol Police didn't shoot more Trump voters in the neck and kill them. You've got guns, use them, Graham said. So here you have a sitting U.S. senator, a Republican, urging police officers to shoot unarmed Americans, many of whom were ushered into the Capitol building by law enforcement. How can people talk like that? For more than a year, they justified rhetoric like Lindsey Graham, shoot more, by claiming that January 6th was an insurrection. That's not a word they were used to describe, say, the months-long siege of a courthouse in Portland or the ongoing coordinated effort to intimidate Supreme Court justices at their homes with guns, a story they ignored today. But January 6th was different, they reminded us. It was unique because it was their offices and because it bothered Nancy Pelosi. The president incited an insurrection against Congress to prevent the peaceful transition of power. And then he sat back and watched the insurrection. Insurrection, a violent mob, a white supremacist president who incited a white supremacist insurrection, an insurrection against our government. The violent attack on the U.S. Capitol was an act of insurrection. The insurrection that violated the sanctity of the people's capital. This was not a protest. This was an insurrection. It's not protest. It's insurrection. I'm going to... We are not defending and would never defend vandalism, violence, rioting. We disapproved of it when it happened. We disapprove of it now. All riots, not just this one. But this was not an insurrection. But you know what will get you to insurrection? If you ignore the legitimate concerns of a population, if you brush them aside as if they don't matter, when gas goes to $5 and you say, buy an electric car, when cities become so filthy and so dangerous that you can't live there, when the economy becomes so distorted that your own children have no hope of getting married and giving you grandchildren, when you don't care at all about any of that and all you do is talk about yourself nonstop, you might get an insurrection if you behave like that, speaking of insurrection. So these hearings are going on now, this primetime performance, we're following them. Of course, if something noteworthy happens, obviously we will bring it to you immediately but we're not gonna repeat their propaganda unfiltered. So what we are gonna do is try to get to the truth. And to do that, we've assembled a bunch of very knowledgeable people who know a lot more than they're telling you on the other channels about what happened on January 6th. We're not gonna do panels on the show, we never do. You're gonna hear from each one individually. And we're gonna begin tonight with Jason Whitlock, who's been watching how our leaders handle January 6th and has been learning a lot from it. He joins us now. Jason, thanks so much for coming on. 
There's a lot going on in this country. They've yeah. decided, it, with the collusion of the news media, to command our attention in prime time tonight on this issue. Why? Because the Democrats and the left are desperate. Uh, Tucker, I, I, I just, I, I loved your monologue, but it, it just makes me sad. A as a man, yeah. I feel like I have failed and we have failed. We're leaving this next generation a country and a culture that has no respect for truth. Th yeah. This whole thing is a charade and a lie. You spelled it out very uh, articulately and accurately. There's no respect for truth. There was no insurrection. There, there was a riot, a small one, that got a little bit out of hand. But to see these people uh, thrown in dungeons and locked up and treated like they're the worst human beings on the planet, it's a joke. It's a joke. And, and particularly to see this charade tonight, when, when we have Brett Kavanaugh, Supreme Court Justice, and his family being terrorized at their home, and we're not talking about that, a Supreme Court Justice and his home and his neighborhood being violated the way that it has been with the approval of Jen Psaki and, and basically the, the administration. Th this is a joke, but it speaks to the desperation of the Democrats and the left. They have no policy. They have no solutions. They have no results to stand on. And so they just want to tap into fear and emotion and continue with the false narrative. This right. this thing tonight, this TV show, Fear Factor, that they're putting on tonight, reminds me of, of the guy that's running against uh, Rand Paul and, and him doing a TV commercial with a noose around his neck. They're just promoting fear. Well, it's interesting that you said that because Benny Thompson, who's the chairman of this committee, um, just gave an opening statement. And I want to play you a 20-second clip from what he just said and get your reaction to it. Speaking of fear, here he is. I'm from a part of the country where people justify the actions of slavery, the Ku Klux Klan, and lynching. I'm reminded of that dark history as I hear voices today try and justify the actions of the insurrectionists on January 6, 2021. So, uh, you know, why is Benny Thompson invoking the memory of slavery as we talk about a dispute over the last election? Tucker, I, I live in the South right now. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I've lived in Rock Hill, South Carolina previously. Again, I don't know what part of the South Benny's from, but I just haven't people, tr I've not been involved with people trying to justify slavery in my lifetime. I just haven't yeah. experienced that. And so, again, it's slander. It's slander of the United States. It's slander of a group of people. It is fear. Hey, we have no policies, but hey, we're not racist, even though we really are racist. And so keep us in power because this other group of people are all out to get you and they're going to lynch you and they're going to put you back in slavery. There's no truth to it. We're living in a time where I've never, I don't, in the history of America, maybe in the history of the planet, this much hostility to the truth is going to be lethal to not just America, but because of America's place as the leader of this planet. This is dangerous for the entire planet for us to be this hostile to truth. I think that's a really smart and scary point to make. Jason Whitlock, thank you. Thank you. Always looking more deeply at the news. So there